bit of an update on the Mark II. Um, it should be, I think, part two of the, and hopefully, final part of the Mark II Escort series so far. Um, I have been busy with it, but I haven't been filming because I have been under a bit of pressure trying to get the car ready for this wedding that's coming up. However, I'm on a bit of a standstill because I'm waiting on parts, so I can get on with the the wiring and plumbing and stuff of the engine whilst I'm waiting. Um, long story short, the gearbox that was bought for this car uh, was a Type 9 V6 box. The owner um, had heard, correctly so, you need to trim down the input shaft of the V6 box for it to fit a Pinto. However, didn't realize that you needed to space out between the bell housing and the gearbox um, by 16 mil to get it to uh, line up so that these splines weren't far sitting far enough forward that they were going to bottom out on the flywheel or the end of the crankshaft. So we put um, my 2 litre Type 9 um, that came in the X pack shell. We put it into it, but it was a wee bit tight on the tunnel and it was hitting both sides of the tunnel very gently, very lightly. Um, and we're not happy with that really. We just we don't want any vibrations while you're driving along or whatever. Every time you hit the car or rev, it'll be rubbing on the tunnel. So he has ordered the correct bell housing, the RS2000 bell housing. Um, so we'll try that whenever it arrives. It's due to arrive tomorrow, I believe. In the meantime, I have started the plumbing at the back of the car. I'm waiting on P-clips to arrive so that I can clip the fuel pipe the whole way up the car. You just about see it sitting, waiting to be clipped up. Um, Tank-wise in the back, uh, it maybe can see it actually from underneath. It now comes out of there on an AN fitting and um, with I can't remember the thread but there's an adapter from the standard Mark II Escort pipe to an AN fitting which then will go out and up over the axle on that flat piece there and um, it'll go over that and then onto the far chassis rail and up and towards the engine bay and um, this should hopefully mean that I don't have to cross it over on cross member or whatever and it should hopefully just present itself nicely down in here somewhere. I need to run a filter. Um, I have a SciTech filter for it someplace. Here. And a bracket for it as well. So I need to work out where I'm going to mount that. Um, brake pipe wise. Now, the owner wants this done. He has a pedal box up in there. So he wants it done in the braided hose and he would like it done in a hidden sort of a manner that it's not coming out through the engine bay because there's no master cylinder in the engine bay so why would you run the brake pipes up those? He wants it to come out through the bulkhead so travel along the bottom of the dash and out through uh, the bulkhead underneath to appear out through here somewhere come out on a bulkhead fitting in copper or conifer come across to this put another bulkhead fitting through to here and then from here to the strut and a flexi so that'll be a learning curve for me but um, we'll get there <laughs> we always do so tonight's task whilst I'm waiting on bits and pieces on the cross flow loom the Coil, well everything swapped around, the exhaust and the inlet are different sides in the cross flow for a start. Which means that everything's really arse about face, it's just on the wrong side for me. So the coil wiring is on this side, whenever it needs to be over here. The alternator wiring, which is here, needs to be over here. I need to work out a few other bits and pieces as well because I didn't take this out of the car. But the likes of this, in theory, should go up here to the strut top but he doesn't want it there because it looks rough and uh, this would have been the main 
auxiliary power to the loom when the battery used to sit up here so it needs stripped back taken into the cab and given an ignition ignition live or permanent live actually possibly i might just strip it back and put it onto the positive terminal of the starter that'll do the same job um another job is this flipping distributor he has actually given me another distributor i believe to fit Pinto Sierra distributor with the electronic ignition on it. So he's given me that and a new old stock. It is four module. Um well I think it's need is for the old school ED, EDY4 um, and a plug and a loom with the female part of the plug so I have to work out how to wire all that in as well and once I've that worked out I then have to take it and cut into it and fit a rev limiter so I have a bit to do yet <laughs> I have a bit to do before the parts arrive so that'll probably be the guts of this evening's work and all being well, if the bits arrive tomorrow, I can start actually putting this gearbox back in. <sighs> Again. <laughs> Onwards. Okay, so now the loom's all stripped back, you can see what I'm playing with here. I have gone ahead and lopped the alternator plug off. It's going to go over here on the alternator, as to be expected really. Um, I have staggered the cuts so that I'm not going to have a big fat bit in the loom. that will have one join here and another join up here. Um, I have also cut the blue trigger wire. So the next step is going to be to get the right gauge of wire. I thankfully have done a big wire order for the X-Pack, so I'll use it and get more for for it. Um, so I have the thicker wire for the alternator wiring, and Ford's Wisdom, I don't quite understand it really. This is the main feed to the loom. This is what goes on to the positive battery terminal normally. It feeds the power to the dash and everything else in the car really. It goes from this black, thin wire, to a red wire, which goes the whole way down the loom into this junction which has two wires going to the alternator and another wire which must go in to feed the dash or whatever so I don't quite understand they're stepping down to a tiny gauge wire at the end but it worked so I'll just replace it with what it is uh, at the minute so yep that'll be the next stage all the wires looked out and I'm gonna get another bit of black for this and just start trying to route the wires around the engine bay nicely and get it all taped up again it's the name of the game
Okay, so haven't been filming this afternoon as per usual, but I am about to go home, so I'll do a bit of a recap video. Um, the wiring is now at the stage where I needed to turn the ignition on, really, to start probing wires just to check that I had the right wire. Um, I needed to fit the gearbox, to fit the starter, to fit the battery cable so that I could fit the ignition switch to turn it on to get power to where I needed it. Thankfully, the bell housing arrived, the nice RS2000 bell housing, uh, and we have success. It works, fits, it's in. Um, don't know if you can see it or not, but there is room between the tunnel now, whenever there wasn't really with the other gearbox. So, next stage is this, hopefully tomorrow, will be to get the power on. I need to make the battery cables, mount the battery underneath the seat or whatever. He's putting one of those Odyssey solid state batteries in, um, so it's safe to go in the cabin. So, with one of those to put in, I have the battery cable already all fed through. So, I just need to make, cut it the length, which it sort of is really, and put an end on it, put it on the starter motor. Um, I'll take you underneath and show you just the bell housing and stuff and go from there. So, the underneath view. You can see the underside of this thing is just as nice as the top. Um, this is the new bell housing which arrived. Um, it's the RS2000 one so it has a starter hole on both sides which did throw me at the start because I was wondering where the flip to put the clutch cable because normally it comes out through the side on an arm here. But, I don't know if you can see it. Um, it goes up in there now. Uh, you have to put the clutch cable onto the release arm up in there. Bit of a pain, but it's done now. Um, the, there's the battery cable that I was talking about. I have it through the hole with some white edging protection to stop it rubbing and shorting out on the chassis, which wouldn't be ideal. Um, the handbrake is nearly ready to be put on as well. I just need to adjust the cable back um, and sort out the pins and stuff at the back here to get it all ready to go. Um, you can see it's sitting way too long at the back here so it needs adjusted to be pulled up towards the that. This is the fuel hose that's going on. Um, it's just sitting up out of the way for now. It comes out of the standard fuel tank in the boot um, on air equipped fittings. It's going to come out up the standard built in clips in the chassis reel uh, and then it'll cross over on this flat section here across the boot floor, or the back of the rear seats, um, before going down this chassis rail on the inside. Um, and then that'll let me get it up to the right side to present it to said fuel pump. Um, the Because this is a Type 9 into a standard Mark II shell, um, everything was a bit tighter really, but We've had to use the lowering blocks from Motorsport Tools for the 5-speed conversion and without this bell housing you will not get a Type 9 into a standard escort tunnel. It just doesn't happen. Trust me. Been there. I've tried three bell housings and only one of them fitted. Um, the front end of it is basically built up. I need to put lock nuts, as you can see with my crude label. I need to put lock nuts on the steering rack. Um, they didn't come with the new rack, so I have them there now to put on. And a few other bits and pieces to do, like getting the... a few other bolts to put in around the RS2000 sump side of things. I haven't got them all in yet. So, that'll keep me busy. Um, I had said this is probably going to be the last episode of this, but the more I look at this, I'm thinking I still have quite a lot to do. So, I will get this hopefully built back up a lot tomorrow. There's no pressure, this has to go to MOT in a week. <laughs> Always do like the pressure around here. So once this is, once you're seeing this, should be one more video hopefully now, um, to see this hopefully starting, running, driving, stopping, and how we do all the braided lines for the fuel and the brakes and stuff. If you like what you're seeing, hit the like button, subscribe. Um, if you hit the wee bell button beside the subscribe button, then that means you get notified of any new videos. As I said, this is only a side project. 
most of my stuff is on my own gear. The X pack, I'm sure a lot will be interested, is being primed. Uh, the engine bay and inner wings and stuff are getting uh, primed tomorrow before the final fitment of the wings and stuff. Then it'll be being primed next week and hopefully should be in paint in the next fortnight. So that'll be an exciting time. Um, I was speaking to my own Mark II Escort fabricator uh, who's in the roll cage and all that. He is hopefully getting back to my car next week as well or the week after. So it's going to be quite a lot of progress in the next couple of months. So yeah, until the next one, bye.